Okay. In our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about malaria. We are going to discuss the presentation and causes of malaria. We are going to discuss that how do you treat non-falciparum malaria and how do you treat falciparum malaria. How to give prophylaxis for malaria. Malaria is caused by a parasite plasmodium. Plasmodium is transmitted through a female Anopheles mosquito. Female Anopheles mosquito is the vector for plasmodium parasite. Female Anopheles mosquito bites a person infected with plasmodium, bites a person with malaria and carries plasmodium to a healthy person. When it bites the healthy person, it transmits the plasmodium resulting in transmission of malaria. Plasmodium has four different types. Plasmodium vivex and Plasmodium ovale are very common. Plasmodium malaria, Plasmodium falciparum, the very dangerous form of Plasmodium, Plasmodium nolesi. These are the different types of Plasmodium parasites. Now, before going into the details of the treatment of malaria, we need to understand a few basic points in the life cycle. Whenever a female Anopheles mosquito carrying the Plasmodium bites a healthy person, it injects sporozytes into the blood of the healthy person. These sporozytes then enter the liver cells and in the liver, they form schizonts. These schizonts then replicate in the liver and they form merozytes. Now, this is a very important point that within the liver, this replication is taking place and these merozytes are formed within the liver. So, the parasite is now in the liver. And then these merozytes are released from the liver and they spread in blood. Then these merozytes infect the human red blood cells and within the red blood cells, they proliferate again and again. And when they proliferate, they lead to the rupture of red blood cells. The rupture of red blood cells causes hemolysis. And within these red blood cells, they form their gametocytes, male and female gametocytes. Now, with the second bite of female Anopheles mosquito, Anopheles mosquito takes up these gametocytes and then these gametocytes fertilize within the mosquito now. So, the human cycle has ended and female Anopheles mosquito cycle has started. These gametocytes fertilize within the Anopheles mosquito and then sporozytes are formed and then this sporozyte is again injected into the blood of a healthy person. So the key points in the whole life cycle is that sporozytes are the one that are injected in blood and then they replicate in liver. Then they go into the red blood cells where they uh, replicate again and leading to rupture of cells and hemolysis. This is the most important point. So now you have the basic idea of the life cycle of plasmodium. Now you can easily understand the clinical symptoms. You can easily understand the treatment. Now, as I said that Plasmodium has different types. Plasmodium vivex and Plasmodium ovale usually cause tertian malaria. It is called as tertian malaria because you see a fever spike every third day. Why do you see a pattern of fever spike? You see pattern of fever spike because during the life cycle, whenever these Plasmodium merozytes are replicating in blood, they lead to rupture of RBCs. And when RBCs rupture in the life cycle, the rupture releases the merozytes into the blood, which leads to fever spike and chills. So whenever there is a point in the life cycle, where RBCs are rupturing, it would lead to a fever spike. And in the life cycle of Plasmodium vivex and ovale, it ruptures on the third day. Therefore, you see tertian malaria. In Plasmodium malaria, you would see quartan malaria, fever spike every fourth day. In Plasmodium falciparum, it is important to remember that it is called as malignant tertian fever. It has irregular fever spike pattern. Fever spike can occur every 48 hours, but it is associated with severe symptoms. And usually there is no fever pattern. There is irregular fever pattern in Plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium nolesi is known to have quotidian malaria, irregular fever pattern. So Plasmodium falciparum and nolesi both have irregular fever pattern. Malaria has quartan fever pattern, fever on the fourth day and Plasmodium vivex and ovale cause tertian fever, fever on the third day. But remember, finding this type of classical fever pattern in patients with malaria is very rare. Usually the patients do not present with this type of specific fever pattern. The fever is very irregular in the patients we see in the hospital. 
coming to the symptoms of malaria in the symptoms of malaria the incubation period of malaria is from 7 to 10 days and patient would complain of severe headache and with headache patient would be having fever and chills remember as i said that those specific type of fever patterns as we discussed before they are not present in the real life patients usually patients would have a uh, irregular fever pattern and a hint would be that if the patient tells you that day before yesterday doctor i was having severe fever and yesterday i was feeling much better and today once again i am having the same condition i am having fevers and chills today so if fever misses a day it hints toward the diagnosis of malaria so if fever misses a day you should have malaria in your mind if there is no other focus of infection with that patient might complain of diaphoresis nausea vomiting hepatosplenomegaly and jaundice because it damages the liver thrombocytopenia dic occurs in severe cases remember platelets and hb would go down in malaria when you order the cbc report you would see hemolytic anemia because the rbcs are getting ruptured in the replication of plasmodium and there would be hemolytic anemia and patient would complain of dizziness weakness due to hemolytic anemia and that's why patient would be having severe headache and with that patient would also be having thrombocytopenia because dic can also occur in severe cases so these are the three four very important point headache with fever that misses a day with thrombocytopenia and hemolytic anemia this hints toward the diagnosis of malaria now coming to the diagnosis and investigations of malaria in the diagnosis and investigations of malaria remember the best initial test is thick blood smear thick blood smear just tells you that whether the parasite is present or not it does not tell you about the species of the plasmodium the number of plasmodium parasites then for the confirmatory test you have to go for thin blood smear thin blood smear tells you that which plasmodium species is present and how much that plasmodium species is present in blood so best initial test is thick blood smear confirmatory test is thin blood smear and if the initial test the thick blood smear comes out to be negative then you need to repeat the blood smear three times every 12 to 24 hours and if that comes out to be negative then you can easily rule out malaria in cbc as i said you would see hemolytic anemia thrombocytopenia and increased ldh ldh is present in the red blood cells when rbcs are ruptured you would see an elevated ldh and possible leukocytopenia this is a classical picture on cbc coming to the treatment of malaria in the treatment of malaria we divide it into two categories treatment of non falciparum malaria and treatment of falciparum malaria non falciparum malaria is usually sensitive to common anti malarial drugs falciparum malaria is resistant to commonly used drugs so the falciparum malaria is severe malaria which is resistant to most drugs now remember an important point if the patient is having non falciparum malaria with plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale plasmodium malaria if infection is mixed with falciparum or if the patient is having severe non falciparum malaria treat it as a falciparum malaria if the patient is having severe infection with non falciparum species or if the patient is having infection mixed with falciparum species in both cases you should treat with stronger anti malarial drugs that we use for the falciparum malaria so you should treat it as a falciparum malaria in these two cases coming to the treatment of non falciparum malaria in the treatment of non falciparum malaria non falciparum malaria is caused by vivax ovale malaria now let's see and in these you can use chloroquine remember in plasmodium falciparum malaria in the falciparum malaria the resistant form of malaria you cannot use chloroquine because it is not sensitive to chloroquine but in these types of malarias you can use chloroquine chloroquine is given by 620 mg base at the start 310 mg base at 6 to 8 hours and then you repeat 310 mg base at the day second and then you repeat it on third day you are giving this chloroquine at specific time why this is because you want to hit the life cycle of the malaria you want to hit the life cycle of plasmodium in the life cycle you give these drugs at certain points so that the plasmodium malaria cannot replicate therefore you give it at a certain points 
and with that you give primaquin primaquin is a very important drug primaquin kills the hypnozoids the schizonts present in the liver as i said that within the replication cycle of plasmodium the plasmodium enters the liver and it replicates in the liver and remember the plasmodium vivax and ovale they are the main culprits who stay hidden in the liver so even if you treat the blood malaria with chloroquine and these vivax and ovale are hidden in the liver this patient will again get malaria this patient will have a relapse of malaria weeks even months and even years after the treatment with chloroquine patient can get relapse because vivax and ovale are hidden in the liver so you have to kill the liver hypnozoids with primaquine you give it 30 mg daily for 14 days so combination of chloroquine and primaquine can be given if the non falciparum malaria is resistant to chloroquine there are certain regions that are resistant to chloroquine where the chloroquine does not work even in the non falciparum malaria in those cases you can use artemether lumiferentrin you can use atovaquone progonil you can use quinine with doxycycline or tetracycline so these are the drugs that can be used if the patient is resistant to chloroquine even in the cases of non falciparum malaria and you have to give primaquine to kill the liver hypnozoids even with these drugs because vivax and ovale hide in liver other thing that can be used other than primaquine is tefenoquine if primaquine is not available now that was all about the treatment of non falciparum malaria malaria caused by vivax ovale malaria now let's see now we'll be discussing the treatment of falciparum malaria the treatment of falciparum malaria is divided into two categories uncomplicated falciparum malaria and complicated falciparum malaria first coming to uncomplicated falciparum malaria as i said in falciparum malaria the chloroquine will not act and you will have to use other drugs you can use artemether with lumifentrine four tablets at 04 8 24 36 48 48 and 60 hours you give it at a certain point to hit the life cycle of plasmodium falciparum and you take it with high fat diet to increase absorption other option include dihydroartemisinin with piperaquine four tablets od for 3 days and you take it 3 hours before or 3 hours after the meal so we we are using these drugs the stronger drug to kill the falciparum malaria you can also use oral quinine sulfate 600 mg tds for 5 to 7 days with doxycycline 200 mg od for 7 days if those drugs are unavailable if those drugs are there you should prefer those drugs if those drugs are unavailable then you can use oral quinine coming to the prophylaxis of malaria remember if someone is going into an area where malaria is endemic and if they have chances of getting malaria you can give them prophylaxis with certain drugs if the area con contains non falciparum species if the area has is endemic with plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale you can give primaquine and if someone is going into an area where falciparum malaria is endemic then you have to see that whether that falciparum malaria is chloroquine sensitive or not most of the time in most areas the falciparum malaria is resistant to chloroquine but there are very few places in the world where chloroquine is still sensitive for falciparum malaria so if it is chloroquine sensitive you can give chloroquine 3 10 mg base one tablet per week one week before and four weeks after the travel if the person is chloroquine resistant in that case you can use mifloquine 250 mg per week two to three weeks prior and four weeks after doxycycline 100 mg od 1 to 2 days prior and 4 week after these drugs can be used other than that atovaquone proguanil can also be used for the prophylaxis in chloroquine resistant falciparum areas so these are the drugs that are used when the patient is going into a area endemic with malaria drugs that are safe in pregnancy include chloroquine mifloquine now this was all about the treatment of non falciparum malaria in treatment of uncomplicated falciparum malaria now in the next video we'll discuss that how do you treat the severe complicated falciparum malaria 
in this video we discussed uncomplicated falciparum but if the patient gets complications if the patient gets severe complicated falciparum malaria in that case what do you do we'll discuss that in our next video you can check out the link in the description in summary we talked about the different species of plasmodium we talked about the life cycle of plasmodium we talked about the fever patterns seen in all those types we talked about the symptoms including headache fever which misses a day thrombocytopenia hemolytic anemia we talked about the best initial test the confirmatory test if the initial test is negative you repeat the test treatment of non falciparum malaria which is chloroquine sensitive if it is chloroquine resistant non falciparum is treated with these drugs treatment of uncomplicated falciparum malaria in the next video we are going to talk about the treatment of complicated severe falciparum malaria prophylaxis with these drugs so this was all about malaria check out my next video for the treatment of severe complicated malaria and check out my playlist on infectious medicine for more interesting videos thank you very much